No matter how far you run, no matter how long you hide, the finger of justice will never lose sight of you. Coffee. Need coffee. I told you, Phoenix, we didn't have any. That bed was way too small. I hardly got any sleep last night. It wasn't designed for someone as tall as you. And I'm starving. Spike and I offered you breakfast, but you wouldn't eat it. Sorry, but I don't eat hay. Stop whining! I'm not whining, I'm complaining! <sighs> Sorry, Twilight. I'm just a bit nervous. I feel like such a rookie right now. I'm gonna be the only human being in that courtroom. I'm sorry, too. The feeling's mutual. Hey! Ah! Can't you just say hello instead of blurting out hey like that? What's wrong with you two? I should be the one that's jumpy right now. Oh. <laughs> that's right. So, did you find any super awesome proof to clear my good name last night? I wouldn't exactly call it super awesome, but we did get a tip-off who will be testifying as a witness today, so we got that on our side. And who would that be? Fluttershy. What? Why is she testifying against me? She better not say anything dumb! Calm down, Rainbow Dash. Fluttershy wouldn't do that. Twilight, do you know what the prosecutor's like? The prosecutor? I forgot to look into that. Speaking of prosecutors... I wonder what Edgeworth would do if he were in my shoes right now. This is just like that one episode of the Steel Samurai where he meets the pink princess! Whee! Doctor, I'd like the part of my brain responsible for that image lobotomized, please. Does it really matter what the prosecutor is like? Save a few. Most of the prosecutors in my world are always stuck up smug and arrogant. Don't worry. I don't think there's any pony in Equestria like that. <laughs> oh, no. We meet again, Twilight Sparkle. Friend of yours? What's with a gap? The great and powerful trick! Trixie is no friend of Twilight Sparkle. What are you doing here, Trixie? Come one, come all, the great and powerful Trixie will be displaying her prodigious and cunning prowess as a prosecutor in the courtroom today. You're the prosecutor? Trixie is a mare of many talents. Does it really come as a surprise? As soon as Trixie caught wind of one of your pathetic little friends performing such a heinous act, Trixie jumped all over the opportunity to humiliate them as you humiliated Trixie. Who are you calling pathetic? Oh, are you mad? Don't worry, the great and powerful Trixie hears that you're going to be having a nice long vacation on the sun. That should get your mind off of things. Ha <laughs> ha! Bon voyage! Why, you? Rainbow Dash, don't let her rile you up. It could look bad for us. And what in Celestia's name are you supposed to be? Me? I'm Rainbow's defense attorney, Phoenix Wright. What? You? <laughs> this should be easy if Trixie's opponent is to be this careless ape. From what Trixie has gathered, you are only here because Twilight screw-up botched a spell. Ha! Trixie would never settle for a wretched-looking creature such as yourself for a defense attorney. Nor would Trixie blunder such a simple summoning spell in the first place. Actually, Rainbow Dash, forget what I said. Go for it. Make it hurt. Gladly! Phoenix, Rainbow Dash, stop it! Trixie, I didn't mean to humiliate you. Please don't take this out of my friends. Hmm, it's too late for that. Now, if you will excuse Trixie, she must prepare for her grand debut as an extravagant and benevolent prosecutor! Phoenix, you know what you said about prosecutors being stuck up, smug, and arrogant? Yes? I guess we have those here in Equestria as well. Who was that? She's a traveling performer named Trixie. I kinda got her name down a long time ago. She only said it about a dozen times. 
said it twelve times, not a dozen. Rainbow Dash, a dozen is twelve. Oh, I didn't know that. It would have been easier if you just said twelve. <sighs> anyway, how do you know that prosecutor, Twilight? I didn't know her as a prosecutor. I don't even know when that happened. She came to Ponyville a while ago, showing off her magical talents. Magical talents? Like magic tricks? She kind of looked like a magician, judging by the attire. Yes, like me, she's a unicorn, and she had a habit for running her mouth about her magical abilities, claiming she was the most magically gifted unicorn in Equestria. Running her mouth is kind of an understatement. She seemed to have some sort of grudge against you. What happened? Uh, how should I put this? I... Twilight totally showed up that's not by fixing up a mess she caused. Well, yeah. Trixie is just jealous because Twilight's better with magic. The mighty don't flaunt their power. The sly eagle hides its claws. Phoenix, I'm impressed. I didn't know you were into proverbs. <laughs> what can I say? I should really tell her I just stole that one from a video game. So, Nix, you think you can beat that stuck-up braggart? Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. You didn't do it, right? I'm sure things will turn out fine. This isn't Mr. Wright's first murder trial, Rainbow. He's a professional. If anyone can get you out of this, he can. No substitute for experience. Right! There's something bothering me, though, Twilight. What is it, Phoenix? You're not getting cold feet, are you? No. It's just that this courthouse looks exactly like the one in my world. Well, of course it does. It was inspired from human architecture. Why would it be inspired off human architecture? Seems a little unnecessary if you ask me. Humans have a commendable sense of justice. The way you humans uphold the law is what must have inspired the designers of this courthouse. Our criminal justice system also resembles yours as well, from what I've read. So you should feel right at home. I just hope justice swings in our favor today. Do you really think the evidence we found will be enough? I hope so. Hey, what's this thing? I don't remember us finding this yesterday. Hey, that's the toy you were playing with yesterday, Nix. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's mine. Must have got mixed up in the evidence we found. And it's not a toy! <laughs> Whatever you say. Can you hand that over here, Twilight? I should really keep a better eye on it. Maya will kill me if I lose it. Sure, here you go. Huh? What the? Whoa! Are you two okay? Phoenix, what was that? I... I don't know. It's never done that before. You still haven't told me what that thing is yet. The light it just emitted, it felt... mystical. It allows me to... Should I really tell her what it does? It would be awkward if I told her I can see deep secrets people are hiding. It allows you to what? It allows me to have good luck. It's a good luck charm. You say good luck charm, I say toy. <laughs> Don't forget who's defending you, Skittles. Here's your... charm. I guess we need all the good luck we can get today. Right. That was odd. It flashing like that when Twilight picked it up? It looks fine. I hope it still works. Are you okay? You look a little worried. It's nothing. The defense and its co-counsel are to make their way to the courtroom. Okay, Phoenix. The trial is about to start. To your best. Ugh, forget about the Magatama. I have bigger problems right now. Even with what little time I had to prepare, I've got to try my best for their sake. Now in session. Are both sides ready? The great and powerful Trixie was born ready. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Your Honor? <laughs> Mr. Wright! Fancy meeting you here! You know him, Phoenix? That's great! But, but, but I thought... What's going on here? Last night while you were in bed, the princess contacted me about complications. Complications? Originally, Princess Celestia was going to preside as the judge, but the High Council members were concerned that her verdict might be biased. But what's he doing here? I thought, since we have a human defense attorney, I'd get a human judge as well. So I summoned the greatest human judge, and he's a really nice guy. He took the whole thing a lot better than you did. I would have told you that I summoned him, but I didn't want to wake you. You're kidding me. Are you sure you didn't summon the fickless judge ever, Twilight? Oh, well. 
As weird as this is, he seems to always be a fair verdict. I shouldn't be complaining. But isn't this princess the ruler of your country? Can't she just say, too bad I'm doing it anyway? Princess Celestia is our all-powerful ruler, yes. But every political decision must go by the High Council first. They represent the best interests of the citizens of Equestria. Naturally, this case went by them, and they wouldn't allow the princess to reside as the judge. <sighs> That's democracy for you. Aren't these ponies just remarkable, Mr. Wright? They've shown me nothing but a good time. All they've done for me is make fun of my hair. Enough with this idle chit-chat! Trixie has a trial to win! Oh, that's correct. We have a trial underway. We'll have to catch up later, Mr. Wright. Uh, I expect you are aware of the workings of Equestria. Huh? The workings? You see, this world operates a lot differently opposed to our world. Twilight Sparkle here showed me a bit, but I figured it's almost like our world, just with talking ponies. No, no, Mr. Wright! There are many amazing things these ponies do that are a far cry from our world. This is why you should have studied. Yeah. Could you tell me about these differences, Your Honor? Well, Mr. Wright, the first thing you should know is... Objection! It's not our fault this bumbling buffoon didn't do any research. We shouldn't be holding up the trial because of his stupidity and negligence. Hey! Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but the prosecution is right. You should have studied Equestria before jumping into this case. Yeah, I'm sorry? I'll try to keep you informed if we encounter anything that may work differently from your world. Alright, thank you. The trial will now commence! Indeed, this drabble has wasted enough of Trixie's time. That third person thing is really getting on my nerves. Very well, the prosecution may make her opening statement. About time. The great and powerful Trixie would like to start off by saying the defense has no chance of winning in this zero, zilch, nada, none. What kind of opening statement is that? In fact, Trixie finds it insulting she is not given a proper attorney to wage battle with. Instead, she is forced to deal with this idiot. What's your problem? Uh, please refrain from personal attacks on the defense, Miss Trixie. Can you please just get on with stating your case? There has to be some rule in the prosecutor handbook to be as unpleasant as possible. <laughs> Very well. Trixie shall dazzle and enlighten you all on the events that transpired that fateful night. On June 8th, around the 20th hour, Ace Swift, a famous Pegasus athlete, was murdered in the Everfree Forest. Unfortunately, we don't know why he was in such a place, but the Ponyville Police Force found his body there, and with the evidence and an eyewitness account, they were able to find his killer, Rainbow Dash. Can you please share with the court the evidence that points to Miss Dash's guilt? Certainly. This is it, Phoenix. We'll finally have some light shed on what exactly happened. Ace Swift was electrocuted and killed instantly, as detailed in this autopsy report. Electrocuted? That is a peculiar way to die. Electrocution? But how? The crime scene was in a clearing. I saw no electronic devices or anything of that nature. Let Trixie finish, you dunce! Ugh. There was also a fresh, sizable burn mark on the back of the victim's neck. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the cause of it. A burn mark? Hmm. That wasn't the cause of death, though. It was the electrocution that did him in. The investigators found decisive evidence pointing to Rainbow Trash as the assailant in this crime. And what was that? A storm cloud found right above the crime scene is what we believe killed Ace. OBJECTION! A storm cloud? You call that decisive? How could you place blame on my client for that? Unless you're honestly suggesting Rainbow Dash can move around clouds and make them shoot lightning at will. Why is everyone staring at me like that? Oh, Mr. Wright. What's her problem, Twilight? She can't honestly think someone can control weather. It's ludicrous! You have to be the biggest imbecile Trixie has ever laid eyes on! Mr. Wright, that's a Pegasus' job here in Equestria. It's sort of what they do. Mm. Uh, what? They schedule and control the weather, Phoenix. When it rains, snows, hails... 
That's all the Pegasi's doing. Oh. Uh, sorry, my mistake. Trixie knew you were incompetent, but this... Ha! This will be a walk in the park. The defense will refrain from any more outbursts, or they will be reprimanded. Maybe you should have, oh, I don't know, studied? I said I was sorry. When a pegasus sets off a cloud, the first bolt will always strike directly under it. This particular storm cloud bore hoof marks of the rainbow-colored loser in the defendant chair. I'll show you who's a loser, you two-bit fraud! Order! Order in the court, I say! The defendant will remain seated during the duration of the trial. This is a disaster. Naturally, the body was discovered directly under the storm cloud in question. Trixie believes this is a pretty open and shut case. Uh, as do I. There aren't many ways to be electrocuted in the middle of the forest. Well, there was that one incident when I was camping with the bug zapper. It nearly fried my beard off! I never saw the judge as an outdoorsman. I'd like to ask some questions. Fine then, Mr. Wrong. Ask away. It's right. First off, how were the police notified of the murder? It was in the middle of a forest, right? Who reported it? It was quite peculiar, actually. Prior to the crime, the police received a vague tip that wished to remain anonymous. They are being questioned more thoroughly in the advent of the murder, though. What was this tip? All they said was, something big is going down in the Everfree Forest. That's it? Trixie told you it was vague. And due to the attitude of this anonymous tip, the police didn't respond as quickly as they could have since the tip failed to specify a time when something big was going down. Isn't that negligence? They could have saved someone's life. This is true, Miss Trixie. Uh, the police force should have responded to this tip more responsibly. If you were to meet this anonymous tip, you'd take them as seriously as the police force did. Any more questions, Mr. Ong? I told you it's right! I do have some questions regarding that cloud, though. How many times did the storm cloud strike? I noticed two charred areas that were quite a distance apart from each other on the crime scene. Three times. After the cloud was activated by... <laughs> you know who. The cloud operates by itself, firing lightning gradually whenever it wants, but never in the same place twice. It was only large enough to hold three bolts of lightning. Three? The first bolt was directly under the cloud where the late Mr. Swift lay. The second one, we don't know where it hit. Objection! Wait, then maybe... Objection! Trixie knows what you are going to say, and it's not going to work. But... The investigation team combed the entire perimeter of the crime scene and didn't find any indication the bolt hit the ground or any trees in the storm cloud's proximity. It's truly a mystery where this bolt of lightning went. Hey, then what if it... Ace was also wearing a lightning-proof suit that protects the body from lightning, standard issue for all participants in the Equestrian 500. It protects Pegasi from lightning when flying at high altitudes. The only reason the first bolt killed him is because it was aimed with precision at one of the exposed parts by Rainbow Trash. I think that... If the second bolt hit Ace directly, it still would have touched the ground, leaving burn marks like the one under the cloud, even if he were struck while in the air. The prosecution's logic is very sound, so I must overrule the defense's claim. But I didn't get to say anything! Fine, then what were you going to say, Mr. Wright? Uh, exactly what she said. Then the defense's claims have been double over. What about the third lightning bolt? Since the storm cloud was important evidence, it was left on the scene undisturbed, and the investigation team witnessed the final bolt take down a tree east of the crime scene, as Trixie will show you on the diagram of this clearing. Right here is where the first lightning bolt hit, directly above the body. We know it was set off at 8.40. The second one is a mystery. We don't know where it touched down, but we are sure a bolt of lightning left that cloud at 8.50. The third bolt touched down at 11.35 p.m. when the investigation team was on the scene, so we can completely rule it out of the crime. It just took down a tree right here. So that's what happened to that tree. But how are you so sure of the time the first two lightning bolts touched down? We were able to use cloud ballistics to confirm the second bolt left the cloud at exactly 8.50. Cloud ballistics? You've got to be joking. I better not question it, though. I don't want a penalty. And the first? That's where Trixie's eyewitness comes in. 
It must be Fluttershy. Since the first bolt was manually set off by a Pegasus, Cloud Ballistics can't confirm when it was fired, but luckily we have an eyewitness who saw it. I wish to hear a testimony from the eyewitness. Please bring them out. Very well. State your name and occupation, please. Huh? Um, where's the witness? Um, down here. That voice. Who is that? I thought Fluttershy was going to be the witness. I think it's my friend's kid sister. What does she have to do with this? Your guess is as good as mine. Perhaps we should get some boxes for the witness to stand on. There, much better. Howdy! Oh, aren't you the most adorable little thing? Now then, witness, state your name and occupation. My name is Apple Bloom, and I'm a Cutie Mark Crusader! Uh, Cutie Mark? What? I did my research in Equestria, but I never came across anything regarding Crusaders. What the heck is a Cutie Mark Crusader, Twilight? It's, um, it's hard to explain. We were informed by a resident of the Everfree Forest this filly was walking home the night of the murder. Sure enough, she witnessed the first lightning bolt. The witness's occupation doesn't matter, though. What's important is what she... What are you talking about? It does matter. As a cutie mark crusader, it's my duty to crusade my talents everywhere so I can earn my cutie mark, even if one-third of the team is here. I'm so confused. What on earth is a cutie mark? Is it the nickname of her boyfriend Mark or something? <laughs> A cutie mark is a symbol ponies earn when we find our special talent. For example, the stars on mine represent my expertise in magic and love for stargazing. That's just... strange. Actually, I wonder what my cutie mark would be. Maybe a hand pointing an index finger filled with righteous justice. That would be amazing. Ugh. Um... Listen, sweetie. Your job is to testify just like Trixie told you to earlier. Hey, what are you? Huh? Me? Stop ignoring the great and powerful Trixie! Yeah, you. I've never seen anything like you before. I'm a human. A human, huh? Is that your job? No, that's my species. I'm a lawyer if you're wondering what my job is. A lawyer? What's a lawyer? A lawyer argues points and theorizes to defend someone in trouble. Your job is to argue? Well, yes, I guess it's kind of like that. I knew it! I knew it! There is a cutie mark for arguing! Wait till I tell Scootaloo! We were going about it all wrong! We can be... Cutie Mark Crusader Lawyers! The future of criminal justice is looking pretty bleak right now. Witness! Let's get back on topic. Testify as to what you saw last night. No! I'm losing valuable crusading time because of you. This is boring. What?! I don't have to listen to you. You're that snotty show-off Applejack told me about. Snotty? Why, you... Urgh. You tell her, Apple Bloom. I'm actually kind of enjoying this. The defense will wipe that stupid grin off his ugly mug, and the witness will cooperate. A witness, can you please testify for us? Then you can do all the crusading you want. It won't take long at all. Besides, maybe you're a... Ooh! A cutie mark crusader witness testifier! Your Honor, how much shame do you have left after saying something like that? Hey, I think you're right, mister. That cutie mark is as good as mine. Ahem. <clears throat> Alright, witness. Tell every pony what you told Trixie earlier. Fine, man. Cutie mark crusader witness testifier! I went to Sigar's place in the Every Forest to help her brew some stuff. After we were all done, I walked home along the pathway. Just then, I heard a lightning bolt. It was 8.40, but it didn't scare me. Then I found my way out of the forest and went on home. So there was indeed lightning from around the time of death. Uh, Mr. Wright, this isn't looking good for your client. Please just let me cross-examine this witness, Your Honor. She's a child, Phoenix. It might just be an overactive imagination. I don't think so. I think she's being vague, if anything. Vague? Meaning she's not telling us everything? Precisely. I don't think this will be about finding a contradiction, more than about digging out those extra nuggets of information. All right, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. 
Before we begin the cross-examination, Trixie knows all about sneaky, underhanded defense attorney Trix. If you dare press this innocent and fragile child too hard, you will be punished. What? She's right. You better not hurt this sweet little one's feelings, Mr. Wright. I know these tactics all too well. You will be forced to face the consequences if you do. Children, the kryptonite of Phoenix Wright. I went to Sakura's place in the every forest to help her brew some stuff. Hold it! Zakora? Who's this? She's a zebra, a friend of mine who lives in the forest. There are talking zebras here as well? Oh, brother. And you were helping her brew potions. What kind of potions? I don't really know. She just told me to gather some flowers and plants outside the house. The zebra told us she was making herbal ointments and medicines. Nothing out of the ordinary. I've heard it all. A zebra brewing potions is nothing out of the ordinary. So what did you do afterward, Apple Bloom? Well... After we were all done, I walked home along the pathway. Hold it! You walked home all alone? I heard that forest was dangerous. Definitely not a place for someone your age. But thank heaven she is alright! There are terrible creatures in that forest. Truth is, I wasn't supposed to be in there that late. I got grounded when I got home. Serves you right for breaking your curfew. Ah! I, I mean, you sure are a brave Cootie Mark Crusader! Cootie Mark Crusader! Mr. Wright, you are treading on very thin ice. I better be careful what I say to her. Try not to be too hard on her, Phoenix. I'm kind of on a handicap here, not being able to squeeze information as I normally would from any other witness. But I've dealt with children in the past, and I can do it again. So you have children? You don't really look like a father type. No, I don't have kids. I meant I've dealt with children testifying. Me with children. That'll be the day. If the defense is done with idle conversation, please continue your cross-examination. And remember, gently, Mr. Wright, or else you'll be hearing my gavel banging an unfortunate fate for you. Yes, sir. The judge is staring at me like he has the intent to kill. Okay, Apple Bloom. Please continue. Just then, I heard a lightning bolt. It was... 8.40. But it didn't scare me. How did you know the time? Sakura's clock said 8.35 when I left, and I have been walking for about five minutes. That lines up exactly with the time of death. Why do you say it didn't scare you? No one asked you if it did. Um, I... I okay, maybe it scared me a little. A little? Yeah, just a little. No big deal. I don't think you're being honest with me, Apple Bloom. Objection! Mr. Wrong is badgering the witness. Who cares if the lightning scared her? Penalize him! Objection! She isn't giving us all the details as to what she saw. Hmm. I'll allow the defense to pursue this matter, but I'm warning you, Mr. Wright. I yes, Your Honor. I understand. Apple Bloom, you need to tell the truth. Even if it may not seem like it, this is really important. Someone's life depends on you telling the truth. Someone's life? Yes. If you don't tell the truth, you may be ruining an innocent pony's life. I, I don't want an innocent pony's life to be ruined. Then please tell us what really happened, Apple Bloom. Fine. The lightning really scared me. Then what did you do? The noise scared me, and I ran off the path deeper into the forest. You ran off the path? Yeah, I kind of got lost in the forest. I was really scared. The witness will amend this to her testimony. Okay. After the lightning scared me, I ran off the path and got a little lost. How long were you lost? I was in there for a really long time. How long exactly? A really long time. <sighs> okay, let's look at this a different way. What time was it when you got out? Hmm, well my house is ten minutes away from the Everfree Forest. So I guess I got out of the forest at exactly nine o'clock. Her family can confirm she got home at 9.10. Interesting. So you were lost for 20 minutes. 
That's quite a long time. It was really dark in there. I couldn't see anything. I remember it being extremely dark in there as well. I could find my way out of the forest while on the pathway because I could feel the dirt road on my hooves. But once I was on the grass, I couldn't tell left from right. So you just wandered around blindly for 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd be lost in there forever. Do not fear, little one. I'll defend you from all those horrible monsters in that dreadful forest with my gavel of truth. The Judge vs. the Everfree Forest. Sounds like the title of a pay-per-view event. I was especially scared when I bumped into that thing. What? You, you bumped into something? Objection! Witness, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Why did you not say anything to me regarding this earlier? Because I don't like you. Ah! Looks like Trixie's getting a dose of her own medicine. Did Trixie just... What? What about her? She just... Never mind, it's nothing important. If you say so, Twilight. I'd like to know more about this thing she bumped into. Uh, as do I. Would you mind adding this to your testimony, dear? Not a problem. All of a sudden, I bumped into something. You bumped into something? What was it? I don't have a clue. It was really dark. I couldn't see anything. You have to know more about this. But I really don't know what it was, Mr. Lawyer. Honest. Objection! Leave her alone, you jerk. She doesn't know what it was. This is important information. Just moments ago, you said she never told you about this. I'm curious to know what she bumped into as well. Objection overruled! If you enjoy hearing pointless information, be my guest. It was probably just a tree or a rock. I think the defense is just hopelessly grasping at straws. Why does Twilight keep randomly looking over at Trixie like that? I should ask her later. For now, I have to focus on the matters at hand. Okay, Apple Bloom. Just like how I asked you to think a different way about how long you were lost, let's think about this a different way. What do you mean? What did it feel like? What did the thing you bumped into feel like? Hmm... Oh, that's right! What is it, witness? It felt alive. It wasn't a rock or a tree. Alive? It was... alive? Please explain how you were able to deduce this. I definitely felt fur when I bumped into it, and I could hear it breathing heavy, like it was really tired. It was... breathing? Could it have been a wild animal? I'm not too sure. I know I heard it breathing heavily, though. How did it react when you bumped into it? When I bumped into it, it jumped a bit. I would probably jump, too, if something bumped me in the dark. As would I. Trixie wouldn't. Trixie is brave and courageous. Oh, shut up. Almost right after, there was another bolt of lightning. That must have been the second one. But the thing is, it didn't scare me. Really, honest this time. Why didn't it scare you this time? I know this will sound strange. After it flashed, my eyes kind of hurt for a bit. That's not strange. Anyone's eyes would hurt if there was a sudden burst of light in pitch black darkness. No, not that part, Mr. Lawyer. After that, I stumbled around for about a minute or two because I couldn't open my eyes. The flash of the lightning made my eyes sting. But when the hurting of my eyes went away, I was outside the forest, just like that. Wh what But, but how? There is only one way in and out of that forest, and that is the entrance on the pathway. The trees surrounding the forest outer perimeter act as a barricade. You can only leave or enter the Everfree Forest from the entrance. Unless, of course, you're a Pegasus, then you can just fly out. That is certainly strange. How could you go from being lost to outside just like that, Apple Bloom? I know it sounds weird, but it's true. I was outside the dark forest after the lightning hit. I went straight home afterwards, and I got home at 9.10 like I said before. Wait a minute. What did you just say? I went straight home after I was outside the forest, because I was, you know, scared. OBJECTION! The prosecution has some explaining to do. Hmm. <laughs> what are you babbling about? Apple Bloom claims she got out of the forest at exactly 9 o'clock, when she saw the second bolt of lightning. Yes. So what? <gasps> I see you caught on. According to these cloud ballistics, 
You said the second lightning bolt struck at 10 to 9. So why did Apple Bloom see a lightning bolt 10 minutes after that? Uh, um, well, uh, maybe... Cool. It couldn't have been the third one since that one struck down after 11. Miss Trixie, this is a big oversight. Why is there a 10 minute gap as to when the child saw the lightning bolt? I'm thinking, be quiet! Oh, okay. Alright, the great and powerful Trixie is done thinking. And? Trixie wants the defense to explain what this means. Hey, you're just saying that because you don't know. You're the one that brought up the inconsistency, therefore you should be the one to explain it. Very well. There are two possibilities to this. Either what Apple Bloom saw wasn't lightning, or she's mistaken on the time. That is, if your cloud ballistics are accurate. They are accurate, to the second. And this Philly's family can confirm she arrived at home at 9.10. So the prosecution is under the impression what little Apple Bloom saw was not lightning. That is Trixie's great and powerful theory! What? I can't believe you just fell for that. B but she stole... I... I... Uh... It could have been a giant Illuma bear the child bumped into, or something of that nature. Many animals in the Everfree Forest have strange characteristics, including built-in lights. She probably just bumped into it and just happened to be near the exit of the forest and stumbled out in her days. The great and powerful Trixie has explained this inconsistency in the witness's testimony. You sure are very bright to do something like that, Miss Trixie. Naturally. <sighs> That, that was, was my, my deduction. deduction. There's still a problem, Your Honor. What is that, Mr. Wright? Miss Trixie seems to have solved the mystery of the time inconsistency. But another mystery comes from that. Do tell, Mr. Wright. The real second bolt of lightning. Why didn't Apple Bloom mention seeing or hearing that? Ah, you bring a valid point, Mr. Wright. Witness? Yes? Did you not see any lightning other than the one at 8.40 that night? I only saw that one at 8.40, and that one after I bumped into that thing. Hmm, this is most peculiar. Uh, Trixie, do you have an explanation for this? Uh, um, well, the defense will- OBJECTION! Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not gonna fall for that again. Besides, remember, it's your great and powerful theory, after all. What do you take me for, a fool? Why, in fact, I do. Low blow, Phoenix. How dare you! Mr. Wright, that was uncalled for. Hey, she's been putting me down all day long. Trixie will show you, you spiky-headed ingrate! Do you remember why this witness is testifying? Yes, to confirm the time of the lightning bolt striking. Exactly, which she did. Anything beyond that is trivial. Though it is suspicious why this witness didn't testify to hearing or seeing the second lightning bolt, the fact still stands. The initial bolt was set off at 8.40. OBJECTION! But the second bolt... OBJECTION! You seem obsessed with that. Perhaps the reason the witness didn't hear it is that she was too far away. The clearing is 15 minutes away from the entrance. Maybe the sound didn't have enough volume to reach that far. I agree with the prosecution. The witness did what she came here to do. OBJECTION OF A RULE! Ah, uh, no! Alright, this witness is free to go! OBJECTION! Aww, nothing. The witness brought up some interesting information, but does the prosecution have anything more regarding the defendant? Trixie has this weather schedule. Weather schedule? Like the forecast for each day? How is that evidence? It's what the weather mare is given to know what weather to make in which areas a pony go. I forgot about that. I still can't believe ponies control the weather. This sounds like some sort of twist at the end of a Twilight Zone episode. Lo and behold! Rainbow Trash was scheduled to make several lightning storms at the eastern end of Ponyville. This is where she got the cloud from. The court accepts this as evidence. It's really starting to look like Rainbow Dash did it. But I can't give up. What about motive? Hmm? 
I was told murder almost never occurs in Equestria. What could drive my client to kill another? Oh, that one is easy. Uh, please explain, Miss Trixie. Both the victim and defendant were to participate in a monumental race called the Equestrian 500. Damn it, she knows! Phoenix language! Oh, sorry. The victim, Mr. Ace Swift, has quite the record, completely undefeated in every athletic event he has ever competed in. That is... impressive. Indeed. Now, Rainbow Trash was probably intimidated by this, and decided to get rid of him like a coward, making it easier to win. She is the top Pegasus athlete in Ponyville, after all. She has a reputation to uphold. She could then reap the spoils of the grand prize, flight lessons from her idols, the Wonderbolts. You have no proof that's what she was thinking. So? You have no proof that wasn't what she was thinking. Trixie doesn't need to establish a motive. How should Trixie know why she killed him? The point is, Rainbow Trash did it. Let's hear your explanation on how the murder went down, then. Very well. Rainbow Dash went to the Everfree Forest. Hold it! How can you be so sure she was there? Weren't you listening to what Trixie said earlier? The cloud above the crime scene had her hoof markings. On top of that, some cyan-colored feathers were found around the clearing. Three guesses as who they belonged to, Mr. Wrong. Rainbow Dash, what were you doing there? Okay, continue. She saw Ace hanging around the forest for whatever reason. Hold it! Why would he be hanging around that forest anyway? That is of no concern to Trixie. That's ridiculous. He had to have had a reason to go in that dangerous forest. If you think it's so important, why don't you give us an explanation? <sighs> I, I don't have one. Thought so. Now let Trixie continue. Do you think it's important why he was in there? I know for a fact there must have been a good reason why he was in a place like that. I just don't know why yet. I wish I had more time to prepare. I guess it's my fault for getting you on such short notice. We're not going to let that stop us, though. Right. All right, Trixie. Continue your explanation. Rainbow Trash saw him at the clearing and an opportunity to permanently retire him from the race, gathered some storm clouds, and BOOM! Friday Swift. OBJECTION! Don't point that ugly sausage of a finger at Trixie. You say Rainbow Dash scoped out the victim in the Everfree Forest that night and saw an opportunity to murder him. Are you deaf? Of course Trixie did. Trixie is always right. Blind. What? Blind is not being able to see. Deaf is not being able to hear, you idiot. No. Blind is how I felt in that forest last night. I couldn't see my hands in front of my face without a light source. <gasps> Even Apple Bloom testified to how dark it was. How could Rainbow Dash see a swift in that darkness and plot to murder him on impulse? Explain that, Trixie. That is, if Trixie's always right. Got her, Phoenix. I just have to keep the momentum on our side now. Is the forest truly that dark at that hour of the night, Miss Trixie? W well, yes. Then the defense has pointed out a flaw in your theory. Why, you... are you mocking me? No, I'm just debunking your flawed theory. Too bad Trixie has an explanation. Care to share it with us? Rainbow Trash probably saw him enter the forest while he was still visible. Yes, that's it. Hmm, that makes sense. She then followed him to the clearing and performed the dastardly deed. It is dark in there, yes, but if you follow some pony from the entrance, it would be easy to track them using your other senses. OBJECTION! Sorry, Trixie, but that's impossible as well. What do you mean? You said Rainbow Dash was scheduled to cause a storm on the eastern end of Pony Road, where you say she got the storm cloud from. The Everfree Forest is in the west, according to this weather schedule you yourself submitted to this court. No! There's no way my client could have flown to the other end of town and back to get a cloud while still tracking Ace in that dark forest. Mr. Royce is correct. It would take some time to travel back and forth between the eastern and western ends of town. <sighs> <laughs> Thought you had Trixie there, didn't you? What? Premeditated. You can't be seriously suggesting. Yes, the defendant must have known he was going to be there. And unlike you, Mr. Wrong... Trixie has proof. The great and powerful Trixie would like to submit this evidence. Hmm. A missing cloud report? Go on. Read the rest, Your Honor. Storm cloud missing at 4 p.m. from eastern end of Ponyville. Weather mayor in charge? 
Rainbow Dash. This can't be. Take a guess where that missing cloud was found, Mr. Wrong. <sighs> right above the Everfree Forest clearing. My word! So the defendant placed it there earlier? This makes all the defense's objections null and void! The defendant knew Ace was going to be in that forest, so she placed the cloud in that clearing well in advance. But how could she have known he would be there? Trixie will say this again, Mr. Wrong. Who cares? The fact is she did it, and that is all that matters. What if some other pony moved that cloud? If that were the case, yes, you could argue another pony moved the cloud. But the only two ponies in that clearing that night were Ace Swift and Rainbow Trash. Unless, of course, you have proof there was another Mr. Wrong. I don't right now. Then it is to be assumed that Rainbow Trash moved that cloud there in foresight that Ace would be there. I've heard enough. With all this evidence applied, I can simply hand down my verdict. <laughs> no, Your Honor. There still might be something we're looking over. The prosecution agrees. Huh? She's agreeing with me? Why? Trixie still has some more evidence. This! What is that? We found this in the victim's bag on the crime scene. A little burnt considering what happened, but the contents are still unharmed. Huh? No! Please put that away! The contents of this envelope are quite shocking. No pun intended. I'm begging you, please don't open it! Whatever's in that envelope really has Rainbow Dash spooked. What on earth is in there? Phillies and gentle colts, Trixie will now reveal to the courtroom what secrets this mysterious envelope holds. Please don't do it, Trixie! I have a bad feeling about this. I hope whatever's in there doesn't hurt Rainbow Dash's case even more. showing these pictures. How do they relate to the crime in question? They were in the victim's bag, weren't they? They are important evidence. Do you think Trixie would be so low as to show these pictures for the sole purpose of humiliating the defendant? That's exactly what I think you did. What were pictures, like these, doing on the victim anyway? How should Trixie know? You said these pictures were important evidence and you're not even going to explain why. Now I know you just brought them out to embarrass Rainbow Dash. In any case, uh, the court accepts these uh, photos as evidence. After that little sideshow, can I declare my verdict now? Most certainly, Your Honor. Phoenix, do something quick. To be honest, I don't know what to do. I've never encountered first-degree murder with a storm cloud before. You said you wing it all the time, right? Well, wing it! Hold it! What is it, Mr. Wright? How are you so sure my, um, my client was at the scene of the crime? If I recall correctly, she was picked up at her house, not on location. Trixie already explained that, you imbecile. Her hoof marks were on the cloud and her feathers were all over the place. You don't think that's incriminating enough? Yes, but the cloud could have been moved by someone else and feathers could have been gathered from anywhere, just as hair falls from your head. I may not have proof yet, but it is a possibility. <sighs> Looks like this is going to drag out a bit longer. Trixie has another witness that can confirm the defendant was indeed at the scene of the crime on the night of the murder. This one has to be Fluttershy. I wonder what she saw. We're about to find out in any case. The prosecution will bring out their next witness. Witness! State your name and occupation. Uh, Witness, get out from under there and state your name and occupation. Fluttershy, I'm an animal caretaker. 
Can you please repeat that, young lady? I couldn't hear you. My name is, is Fluttershy. Nope. Still couldn't hear you. Maybe I can milk this situation to our advantage. What do you mean? Your Honor, this witness clearly doesn't have the ability to testify. Perhaps we should suspend the proceedings of this trial for another... Oh, Mr. Phoenix, you're here. You haven't died yet? There must be something very wrong. You look so frail and seem to be suffering more than ever right now. You've got the last part right. Mr. Wright, tell her to state her name and occupation, please. But that's the prosecution's job. It's her witness. This witness was being difficult when Trixie was preparing her earlier as well. Given the circumstance, just do it, Mr. Wright. Fluttershy, I, I mean witness, state your name and occupation, please. Never, Never thought, thought I'd, I'd be saying that you. line. I'm Fluttershy. I'm an animal caretaker. Is it true you saw Rainbow Dash leave the Everfree Forest two nights ago? <laughs> Mr. Royce. <sighs> Is it true you saw Rainbow Dash leave the Everfree Forest two nights ago? This kind of backfired on me. Yes, she seemed to be in a hurry. So the defendant was indeed at the scene of the crime at the night of the murder. Witness, you will... <clears throat> Mr. Wright, uh, tell her she has to testify. Now I have to do your job too, Your Honor, Fluttershy? Yes, Mr. Phoenix? Can you please testify as to what you saw two nights ago when you saw Rainbow Dash leaving the forest? Um, I don't know what testify means. It just means, tell us what you saw that night. Oh yes, I can do that. Anything for you, Mr. Phoenix. It was during the night hours. I went outside to feed the chickens and the other ones. When I was near my chicken coop, I heard a lightning bolt in the distance. And it scared me. After I finished feeding my chickens, I saw Rainbow Dash flying away from the forest like something was chasing her. I called out to her, but I don't think she heard me. I looked up, but saw nothing following her. That was when the police ponies arrived. They spoke with me, and I went off to bed at 10.30. <laughs> if that isn't an airtight testimony, Trixie doesn't know what is, by Rainbow Trash's own friend, no less. Fluttershy! Hi, Rainbow Dash. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. Did you see anything odd in there, Phoenix? Not really. Trixie's right. It's kind of airtight. Then what do we do? Poke holes into it until it isn't airtight anymore. That's the spirit. I just hope Fluttershy isn't lying about anything. I actually, I actually hope she's lying, lying, so I have something to work off of. It was during the night hours. I went outside to feed the chickens and the other ones. Hold it! So... You say you went outside to feed your chickens and the other ones. What do you mean by that? I'm taking care of a lot of exotic animals right now. I see. How did you acquire them? A zoo in Philadelphia is, well, renovating. And they needed a place for all the animals to stay while they do it. They heard about my talent with animals, somehow. And they came to me and asked me to take care of them. Of course, I said yes, since they had lots of birdies and critters that I've never seen before. And I always like to meet new animals. How long have you had these animals? Three days now. Is it hard work taking care of them all? Objection! What, pray tell, does this have to do with murder? Well, I kind of like animals too, and... Stop going off topic, you incompetent fool! I really hate you, Trixie. You know that? I better keep note of these exotic animals, though. Something about it. When I was near my chicken coop, I heard a lightning bolt in the distance, and it scared me. Hold it! You heard thunder while you were in your chicken coop? Well, it was lightning. No, Fluttershy. Thunder produces the sound, not lightning. Wrong again, Mr. Wrong. For the last time, Trixie, it's right! Would you please stop calling me that? Actually, here in Equestria, Lightning is what produces the noise when it strikes the ground. Ugh, that wasn't what I wanted to ask anyway. What time was it when you heard it? 8.40, on the dot. That's quite exact. How are you so sure? It's the time I feed my chickens every night. 
feeding chickens at night? You might snack. I couldn't send them to bed without one. What if they starve to death while they're sleeping? Oh my! I never realized the importance of midnight snacking! That's our naive Fluttershy. And that's my clueless judge. Are you positive it was lightning you heard and not something else? I'm sure it was lightning, because the sound of lightning really frightens me. I remember getting scared when I heard it. I nearly dropped all my chicken feed. This lines up with the time of death and when the initial lightning bolt was set off. After I finished feeding my chickens, I saw Rainbow Dash flying away from the forest, like something was chasing her. I called out to her, but I don't think she heard me. Hold it! How long did it take you to feed your chickens, Fluttershy? Um, about 15 minutes. And you're saying you saw Rainbow Dash fleeing from the forest at that time? Yes, I thought there was a ferocious creature chasing her, judging by how fast she was flying. What did you do then? I called out to her at the top of my lungs to see what the problem was. And she just ignored you? Yes, I don't know why. I yelled so loud at the top of my lungs, like this. <gasps> Rainbow Dash, what's wrong? Yeah, I haven't the faintest idea how she didn't hear that. So, you didn't see anything chasing Rainbow Dash? Yes, I watched the forest until the police arrived. But I didn't see or hear anything come out of it after Rainbow Dash. What is it, Phoenix? I think I just found a contradiction. You mean Fluttershy is lying? I don't know why, but something she said is impossible. Impossible? Your Honor, can you please have the witness amend that statement to her testimony? Hmm, I don't see why not. Witness, please add your previous statement to your testimony. Um, okay. I didn't see or hear anything else come out from the forest that night. Fluttershy, are you absolutely sure about this? I'm sure. Not a peep or pony came out of that forest until the police came and spoke with me. Then I went to sleep at 10.30. OBJECTION! Mr. Wright, please don't frighten the witness. Right, sorry. But there's a contradiction in this testimony. What contradiction? Everything she has said meshes with the evidence to a T. No, there's one thing that isn't right. Fluttershy, you said you were watching the force until the police arrived, correct? Y yes Did I do something wrong? I'm so sorry if I did. Uh, no need to be sorry. But you didn't hear or see anything come from the forest? I didn't see or hear anything else come out of the forest that night. Then there's clearly a contradiction here. Actually, two. Please explain what these contradictions are, Mr. Wright. Fluttershy should have seen someone leave the forest. The previous witness, Apple Bloom. Ooh, that's right! But I, I didn't see Apple Bloom. I promise. You see, Fluttershy, you had to have seen Apple Bloom if you were really watching the forest all night. The prosecution even confirmed there's only one way in and out of that forest. And the entrance is right by your cottage. I don't understand. Why would Fluttershy lie like this? I don't know either. We've got to pursue this issue, otherwise we're cooked. I, I don't know why, but I didn't see her. It's not just that. There's another thing, Fluttershy. You also stated you heard nothing as well. Earlier I was told lightning makes a noise when it hits the ground in Equestria. Yes, that is right, Mr. Wright. Then why didn't Fluttershy mention hearing the second bolt of lightning? Fluttershy says she watched the forest until the police arrived. And they witnessed the third bolt take down a tree firsthand. The second lightning bolt is unaccounted for. I only heard one bolt of lightning, though. Objection! Maybe she just forgot about it. Objection! She stated the first bolt of lightning scared her, from which we can conclude that every bolt of lightning could have been heard from Fluttershy's cottage. It's very clear this witness is afraid of lightning. And everything for that matter. Lightning scares me. It is so loud and scary. Like that voice you just did, Mr. Phoenix. There you go, Trixie. She would have remembered the second bolt of lightning frightening her if she had heard it. Also, let's not forget, Apple Bloom didn't mention seeing or hearing this lightning either. Now that we know the lightning could have been heard from that far away. The defense has a point. 
and Trixie thinks the defense has nothing. Excuse me? So what? She didn't see Apple Bloom. What does that prove? Do tell Mr. Wrong, Trixie is all ears. It questions the credibility of your witnesses. You said it yourself. There's only one way in and out of that forest. Remember another thing. Anything beyond what Apple Bloom said after the time she heard the lightning bolt is irrelevant. You can't say this is irrelevant information when your witness didn't see your other witness leave the forest. Then tell the great and powerful Trixie what it means. Trixie knows one possibility, but that's up to you to say what it is, Mr. Wrong. That is, if you have the guts to. I... I can't. Huh. <laughs> Thought so. What is she talking about, Phoenix? You know a reason why Fluttershy didn't see Apple Bloom? I... I do, but I can't say it. Why not? I just can't, Twilight. I'll be safe and use the other contradiction as my steed for now. Fine. Forget that. We can't overlook this second bolt of lightning, though. It could have been the real cause of death, making this all just an accident. <sighs> Didn't you hear Trixie earlier? Huh? Lightning doesn't hit the same spot twice in Equestria. Just as you can't divide by zero, the body was found directly under where the first bolt had struck. Not to mention the odds of a stray bolt of lightning hitting the victim by chance are highly improbable, especially since he was wearing a lightning-proof suit. I remember her bringing up this lightning-proof suit. It's what the Pegasi wear when working with weather. Or, in this case, a modified version designed for large-scale races where they might encounter dangerous weather conditions. How exactly does the suit work? It's a two-piece suit, worn on the head and body. The fabric is made up of an effective insulator that protects Pegasi from being harmed by lightning. Then how did he die if he was wearing the suit? There are some parts of the body that the suit does not cover, namely certain parts of the head and neck. A precise, aimed bolt could still hit him in the sweet spots, which is what Trixie is basing her claims on. But it's still possible for a random bolt to hit him in one of those exposed spots. I'm surprised you haven't realized it yet, Mr. Wrong. Huh? You have been babbling about Trixie's witnesses not seeing the second bolt of lightning so much you seem to have forgotten. The second bolt seems to not exist at all. Trixie will be sure to have a chat with the Pegasi who gave her these cloud ballistics to confirm it, Trixie assures you. Even if we take your silly theory into consideration, the odds of him being struck down by a random bolt of lightning are too low without having some concrete proof. The prosecution's logic is very sound. The chances of a lightning bolt hitting the victim by chance are too small to hold water in this court without any proof. Considering the protection he was wearing, OBJECTION OVERRULED! No! Every time I make an objection, she has it refuted just like that! Ha! Too bad, Mr. Wrong. Enough! I'm afraid the defense's line has run short. Do you have anything else you would like to say, Mr. Wright, before I hand down my verdict? I'm going to lose if I don't do something fast! Phoenix, there has got to be something we can do. It can't end like this. I know, but I need more time. I need more information. Please, Your Honor, make this quick. Trixie's starting to feel sorry for this hopeless defense team. There is one thing I can do. I didn't want to do it earlier, but I have no choice. I need more time and evidence. This is the only way. Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? The defense would like to cast suspicion on another. Another suspect? Yes, that is correct, Your Honor. But who? Is this the last bastion of Mr. Wrong? <laughs> Let's hear it. Who is this mystery suspect? I'm far from being done, Trixie. The suspect the defense accuses is the witness. Fluttershy! Huh? Mr. Wright, what are you doing? Fluttershy is a Pegasus. Therefore, she could have tampered with the cloud and the crime scene. Let's not forget, there was a very large time frame where Fluttershy was alone. She even stated she didn't see Apple Bloom leave the forest, when we all know she should have. But I was watching it the whole time. I'm not lying. Huh. Fluttershy also has connections with my client. She could have been the one who took the storm cloud my client was scheduled to set off, as well as gathered loose feathers and spread them around the crime scene. I didn't do that. Phoenix, stop this! She didn't do it! But the defendant's hoop marks were on the storm cloud, Mr. Wright. How do you explain that? I'd be surprised if they weren't there, Your Honor. Hmm. 
I don't follow. Simple. Rainbow Dash was to put those clouds on the eastern end of Ponyfell, according to this weather schedule. Ooh! Of course her hoof prints are there! She was just doing her job! Fluttershy could have come and taken one of the clouds with the marks on it, set it off, and removed her own markings from the cloud. That is possible, right? Yes, one could wipe a cloud of their hoof marks. Then all the more reason to suspect her. I was home all day, though. Phoenix, you're supposed to be defending my friends! What about the dark forest, Mr. Wright? How would this witness have been able to see in it? It must be like a backyard to her. She could probably navigate it by memory, just as you could probably navigate your house with your eyes closed. Hmm. This is a very bold claim, Mr. Wright. This big little thing looks like she wouldn't harm a fly. Why would she frame her friend? It's true. I have ten pet flies. Michael, Donna, Steven, Eric, Jackie. Easy. To cover her own guilt. Besides, as the prosecution has stated, why she did it is irrelevant. The fact still stands. She's just as suspicious as Rainbow Dash. I can't believe you're saying this. I trusted you! You're going to need more proof to accuse this witness, Mr. Roy. Do you have any evidence that can place her on the crime scene? In fact, I do, Your Honor. This! A feather? Does it belong to her? No. I found this feather at the crime scene. It's way too big to belong to any bird or pegasus pony in Ponyville. Just what are you getting at, Mr. Wright? How does this relate to the witness? Fluttershy! It is, Mr. Phoenix. Do you allow any of your exotic animals to go in the Everfree Forest? Oh no, it is much too dangerous in there. They are kept locked up tightly when I'm not playing with them. As I thought. Fluttershy stated earlier she's caring for animals not native to Ponyville. This feather could belong to one of them. It could have been brought there unintentionally by Fluttershy as she framed my client. OBJECTION! This can't go on! The... defense is objecting to... itself? Yes! Mr. Wright doesn't know what he's talking about. His words are nothing but slander and lies! Twilight? OBJECTION! Zip it, Twilight. You're only his co-counsel and nothing more. Discrediting an attorney like that will get you held in contempt. You're a hypocrite! You've been degrading him all day long! And that's it! Trixie has just called Mr. Wrong names. Never once has Trixie accused him of lies or slander, which is a serious accusation. You are right as always, Miss Trixie. Another outburst by the defensive counsel, and they will be held in contempt of court! But... but... Trust me, I don't want to do this, Twilight. But it's the only way I could buy more time. Back to the matter at hand. I still have a hard time believing this little pony would do something like this. The evidence speaks for itself, Your Honor. This feather puts Fluttershy on the scene of the crime. I demand further investigation to find out if this feather belongs to any of Fluttershy's animals. Hmm... Miss Trixie, what is your opinion on all of this? You have been surprisingly quiet regarding all of Mr. Wright's claims. You know what? Trixie agrees. Fluttershy is suspicious. The investigation team did indeed see this feather on the crime scene. We brushed it off as just a plain old bird feather, but as Trixie's feeble opponent has pointed out, it does seem kind of big up close, and with this information regarding these zoo animals, it does seem to cast suspicion over this witness. You are aware we will have to suspend proceeding until tomorrow for further investigation. You don't think Trixie knows this? Another one of Twilight Sparkle's little friends in the slammer is reward enough for Trixie today. Two for the price of one, as they say. <laughs> and Trixie has you to thank, Mr. Wrong. You've made this experience much, much more fulfilling. Perhaps Trixie will give you a voucher to her next performance. All proceeding for this case will be suspended until tomorrow. Bailey, please take the suspect into custody for questioning. Wait, oh, where are you taking me? I wouldn't do that to any pony! Twilight! Mr. Phoenix! Help! Phoenix, how could you? What have I done? I expect both sides will gather more evidence for tomorrow. Trixie shouldn't need to if they're planning on keeping that second-rate lawyer over there. Court is now adjourned!
mía!